Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Thursday the 31st of October. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you are all very, very well. The plan's to get it out quick. I know I said I do tips the league. I want to get this out quick because I think they've got a few price sensitive ones. Um, so we'll do the tips the league <laughs> on the uh, whatever Thursday night video. Um, that's the plan. Um, because yeah, I've got five for... Thursday, uh, I'm looking to give the bookies a, a nightmare. It's Halloween, you know, you've got to have some sort of cheesy joke, haven't you? Um, but uh, yeah, in October, I've had a nightmare. So uh, so yeah, the, the bookies certainly aren't scared of me at the moment, are they? But um, yeah, we've, we've got the last day of the month. Will it go down as one of the worst months ever on the channel? Or can we have something miraculous that comes out of the fire? Uh, or even the bonfire, if you're going to go that far. Um that's uh, next next week but um yeah got five some of them will look a bit outrageous so uh you know those who like a big price you'll love it those of you who uh, who like to mock uh <laughs> you'll love it too <laughs> so so there you go what i've done with the five i've split it into two tricks before i do that i'll do the review of wednesday where basically broke about broke even roughly it was about 35p loss but um not quite good enough just basically bust out the stalls that was the problem there um and then he was done for because didn't want to come all the way from the back that one wasn't quite good enough it was fourth and wilderness there's me telling you it's a plugger on from the back historically it has gone it has gone near the front but not like that um <laughs> i mean literally the last few runs it's had over kempton come from the back but um no it went from the front this time um Went from the front and oh and by the way, yeah, and went too fast. Um so I mean catch a break. Can he catch a break? Yes, I did catch a break at the four twenty three at Kempton, Patagonia girl, sixty six, uh widely available, went off at thirty threes, ran a great race, um, very fast finisher and was a comfortable second place. Um just the single on it. So again we managed to hit this this the one that's on the single on its own has done alright, but uh not the ones in the in the main bet. Um, so 10.65 back, 11 on is what I've got. All right, let me spin through the five. Uh, so yeah, five for Thursday, split across two Trixie. So one horse is duplicated, and that's basically my slight lean. I think it's two two stars and three one stars. Slightly, nothing nothing more than that. Um, but definitely not the most obvious races in places. All right, we're starting off here. This is my jumpsy bet. Um so we're going 135 Stratford, novice race, uh, travelling soldier. On paper, it's Ollie Murphy's second string. Lewis Stones is riding it. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of had it sort of in the bracket a third, fourth best. So I kind of see the horse from a range point of view being second to sixth. So that was pretty good um, in terms of that aspect of it. it but therefore, broadly speaking, you look at, you know, goes a 50-50 chance of, of placing. It's obviously a bit more than 50-50, but 40 to 1 is a really, really good price. 14 runners, a lot can happen. And with these sorts of races, if they choose not to uh, to give that horse maximum effort because it's in a novice and they're trying to get a handicap mark, that's what happens sometimes. But on paper, with known form, that is a second to sixth horse. So Travelling Soldier, 40 to 1 is in. Then we're going to 205 Stratford. It's a five runner handicap. I'm really hoping we stick with the five places. I think it's very punty. And I'm not even, I'm not in the blinking star system one. Again, I mean, literally one job, one job, folks. One job is all I've got to, well, I haven't, I've got lots of jobs to do actually. But um, in terms of the thing that I consistently forget, I have to say my memory is shot to bits uh, in the last few weeks. Maybe maybe that's <laughs> What's going on with the horses? Maybe that's his, me, me admitting what's happening with the horses. I uh, can't remember anything anymore. But anyway, 205. Why am I going outrageous storm of light, 80 to 1? It was a 150s with 365. You can get 100s, I think, possibly still, and it's 66 and others, but 80s is a fair price making a video. Right. What you've got is a horse in a five runner race that is £20 out of the handicap. So that's why it's the price it is. You've got a, a, a skeleton hot pot favourite that basically is coming on chase debut, 
First time out of the season, historically needs a run. It's not the strongest race, but the Skelton favourite has got vulnerabilities and shouldn't be as short as what it is. The second favourite also is one that looks like it needs a run next time out. You've then got quite an exposed one that basically is like a 10-year-old, I can't remember the name. It's um, it, it looks like it should be competitive enough, but doesn't look like it's necessarily got enough to win. And then I think the fourth favourite is like walking on air, something like that. Um, that one's coming off a big break. The break doesn't look so much of a bother to me, um, but it's quite a lengthy one. Um, and it's one, what it has run one chase race and it was okay. So what you've got with Storm of Light is it ran last time significantly out of the handicap and managed to finish not far away fifth of sixth. We've got a five runner race, so who knows what's going to happen with tactics and pace. That can throw up a strange result. So that one I'm okay with. Um, this horse was, that is Ollie Murphy. That was Ollie Murphy. That's now Rob Summers. But it was with Ollie Murphy, it was running over handicap hurdles. And if it was equivalent mark of what it is on net for this race, it would be competitive. The problem it is, it's not shown it over chases and since it's gone over to Rob Summers. And that's why it's got a £20 less handicap mark. So it'd have £20 less. So in theory, if, if this was in a lower quality race, it could run off £20 lighter. So why why would you run it in, a, in this sort of race? Well, if you think you can sneak a bit of prize money, potentially, I think... Um, He's surely not putting it in there because he thinks he's suddenly going to have a jolt of improvement. That being said, the first three times it ran for Rob Summers, it pulled up. And last time showed significantly more about it with James Best, who is also riding again. So five run, a tactical race. Some of them not run over chases. Some of them are coming on first time in this season. So as much as on paper you go £20 out of the handicap looks outrageous... There's a 40% chance that horse frames if they all had an even chance. It doesn't have a 40% chance of framing, but no way 80 to 1 quarter of the odds is it, is, it, um, is it that bad. So I think it's worth just having a little tinkle at that sort of price and we'll see. I do think it will come, come in shorter. Um, and that's, that, so that's one star, both one stars. And then the 250 Newcastle, this is the slight lean horse. It is Devon Skies. What do I? <laughs> what do I know about? Oh yeah, there's, there's. It's an eight runner, eight runner maiden. I think it is the front two in the market, are the right two, but that one is really actually closely third best on form as far as I would read it. The market doesn't say so, but I think the market will catch up by the time we get to the race. Could be in the morning. I think that horse will be single figures. Um, it's comfortably third best on known form and so in that sort of a race it's a really good each way better 16 to 1 so that's why I put it in both Trixies 50p each way Trixie so that's each way doubles and trebles 75p each way singles on all three Paddy's the best bookmaker because Paddy are going four on that maiden everyone's three everyone's two Paddy are four everyone's three so Paddy's best 850 that's bet one bet two Newcastle, Devon Skies, as mentioned, that is there. And we've got two on the all weather, one handicap, one not. So the handicap horse, five o'clock chance for Touchwood, it does need to bounce back. Um, this time, sort of last year, is when it, it hit peak form and it ran its two best races at Chelmsford and Lingfield. Hasn't run there since. So we're sort of having a little leap of faith there that Chelmsford um, will bring a better result out of it and it needs to bounce back. So there's a bit bit of leap of faith there, but it did come out as a two-star bet as far as I would read it compared to... Yeah, there's not there's not a lot of other stuff in the race I'd be interested in. There was, there was one other horse that was like half the price and so it was quite comfortably that was the one that was right for the channel. And then the 515 Southwell, um, Solaria. It's a strange one. This is a 10-runner race. Um, was it novice, novice or a maiden? I can't remember on that one. I've got too many novices and maidens spinning around my head. Ten runners, three of them have run, all to a pretty poor standard. Of the three that have run, that's the one that actually has run slightly better than the other two. On paper, then the other seven who haven't run before don't look brilliant either. It's a really poor race. But there's, on the basis of that's the best of the three that's run, it should not be 33 to 1. Now, whether you're gonna, you know, going to try for that horse to win or not, it's a it's a winnable race because it doesn't look like and there's anything great in it. Um, so it all comes down to whether they want to actually push that for some effort to uh, to, to you know to get it to surprisingly win a maiden or um, whatnot, or whether they think you know what we'll just keep it for handicaps. But I'd say this is a winnable maiden, um, and uh, a thirty-three to one massively overestimates uh, over. over 
whatever. It's too big. Um, so it comes out only one star, but 33 to one. Uh, so 50p each way Trixie on that. And then 50, 75p, sorry, 75p each way singles on Touchwood and Solaria. Seven pounds a bet. Sky's best because Sky are going four, and I think everyone else is three. Their standard terms is just that one. So there's not really much in the way of extra places. So it's quite quite straightforward for everybody. Um, was it 15.50 on? So 15.50 is my last October roll of the dice. Um, and yeah, pretty simple. If we if we hit a place a place treble on either either one of those bets, then uh, suddenly October looks all right again, doesn't it? Uh, and if we, uh, or, or a couple of winners, that would be even better. But um, yeah, that's what we need to do. Um, so you you do what you do. That's what I've done. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're, we're a bit around the houses, really. Four four different meetings across the five horses. Um, and yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, potentially with the ramble, potentially with the tips of the league. I have promised that. Um, I know there's you know, there'll be people waiting to find out who's 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 done stuff. It has been a bit more complicated, but we are there with the results between Stephen, Satman, Stephen, and I. Um, and once again, thank him for his uh, his, his grand efforts behind the scenes does it all of his own time um, and uh, yeah I I enjoys doing it and uh, and I'm grateful for him and the support he gives me so that's that right see you tomorrow thank you very much bye bye